Dear beautiful people, today I want to talk to you about the importance of practicing to die. This is something that many humans avoid. And you can see, th see this in their fr frantic activity and the way they plan their lives. They barely ever stop, they barely ever sit, they barely ever embrace the silence or just watch a tree for a while, watch the sky for a while. Jumping from appointment to appointment, rushing to get somewhere just to not arrive, to not become self-aware, because with self-awareness comes death of the personality. So then, we keep giving our brains input and what we call distraction is really distraction. We're distracting ourselves from becoming conscious. Because if we truly would be conscious, we would become aware of the accumulated pain within our system. We would become aware of the programming in our minds that are profoundly negative and fearful in nature. And if we would truly, truly become aware of the present moment, we would face death. Now, several of my students reported after meditation class that they experienced the fear of death in meditation. And they were judging it. They were judging it from the level of personality. And they're saying, well, that's horrible. That is scary. Well, it is only scary as long as you identify it with the person, with the ego, with the narrative that you have in your mind. You see, I encouraged my students to watch the fear of death, to keep sitting, to stay relaxed, sit straight, to breathe deeply and to watch the fear of death. So watch it and when we watch it, we go beyond it. And then we realize ourselves as who we are. But in order to do that, we need to let go of identity, we need to let go of the ego. And the ego will in deep meditation experience the fear of death. And we say, don't go there, don't step through that door, that is scary. It's afraid of annihilation, it knows about its fragility. So then, people feel the fra fragility of their egos, but they do nothing else but to protect their egos. You see, they try to gain a lot of material objects, have a lot of insurances, build a high fence to protect their property, hide from the world and constantly keep them busy, so they don't realize the fragility of their fictitious identity. I often say all identity is illusion and I mean that. Everything that is temporary, everything that is trapped within space-time, bound by the law of impermanence, is an illusion. So only when we're willing to go beyond that illusion do we realize ourselves beyond space-time. And as such, the fear of death will be no more. But in order for us to go there, we need to practice to die. And only when we're practicing to die are we capable of living, fearlessly. You see, when you're afraid of death, you will have concerns about what you call yourself or what you call I, and you want to protect that. So when you're busy acting on survival instincts, as human beings we become greedy and selfish, we lose awareness for, let's say, groups and other people around us. We cannot extend our awareness to the well-being of others because we're afraid. We're putting all the attention and fear and pain. So, as such, in order to fully live, that means to the full capacity of who you are in this experience here, it means to live fearlessly. But you cannot live fearlessly as long as you're convinced that you're, good, that you're about to die. So, therefore... You need to learn that letting go of control doesn't mean that you die, but it is surrender. It means surrendering the personality so the deeper self can emerge within you. And, the, uh, and there are very practical ways of approaching this. Let's say you're going on a date and uh, you get rejected. Usually, the ego would draw identity from it. It would make it, itself a victim to the experience. Do the opposite. Sit somewhere, calmly, feel, feel the emotion of rejection, feel it deeply and keep breathing. 
If you spill coffee over your favorite book, relax your body. Keep breathing. Stop generating this victim story in your mind yeah, that tells you that the world is trying to do this to upset you. Yeah? When you break a glass, relax. Keep breathing. Make a mindfulness exercise out of it. Collect the glass. Calm them. When you lose an object that you were sentimental about, keep breathing. Relax. Feel the pain of the loss. Allow the pain of the loss. So you go beyond it. This is a very, very profound exercise. And when you start exercising, at some point you will realize you stop generating suffering for yourself. And a deeper underlying truth can emerge. You see, the ego sees itself as a victim to the experience. So it says, oh, I always get the red light. Never do I get the recognition. You see? And the ego says, the world takes everything away from me. Yes, the world takes all illusion away from who you are, so you can emerge. So, to understand this, all these experiences are invitations. This can be the death of a loved one. This can be the loss of a job or an illness. When you face with the law of impermanence, you are being invited by a loving universe to look beyond the illusion. The ego will reject it, and it will say, I reject the suffering, I reject the pain. So as such, it will actually create suffering and pain because it's not willing to look beyond the illusion because it is attached to the illusion. It wants to hold on to the objects, to the relationships, to the experiences that it collected as memory and says, this is I. So when you lose things and choose you never lose anything because you didn't own anything to begin with. Yeah. Nothing can be owned, nothing can be possessed, everything is coming and going, even your body. So then understand that all these situations where you perceive a loss, the ego perceives the loss, it's not the real you that is perceiving the loss. And actually it's an invitation by the universe to look deeper, to look beyond the illusion and to know yourself. Contemplate about that. Be well.